Isaac Newton stuck a large needle into his eye socket. We all know him as the father of modern physics or the goat of science, but what about the mad scientist side of this genius? Let's dive into the mad and genius sides of Sir Isaac Newton. He stuck a bodkin, a kind of blunt needle into his eye socket. In the first half of the 17th century, the French philosopher René Descartes proposed a curious idea about color. He suggested that color perception was caused by pressure exerted on the eye by swirling vortices. Newton read about this and didn't agree. Descartes conceived the notion as a philosophical construct. Of course, Newton would only accept the experimental proof. He was curious as to how the shape of the eye affected color perception. To deform his eyeball, he placed a bodkin under his eyelid. By carefully moving the bodkin, he pushed his eye around, producing odd circles of color and other images. Isaac Newton invented calculus to answer the question of the falling moon. Newton's inquisitive mind led him to one of humanity's greatest questions. If an apple falls, does the moon also fall? Why doesn't the moon crash into the earth if it is constantly falling towards it? To solve the falling moon mystery, Newton realized he needed a new mathematical framework. So just like that, he invented calculus to describe and analyze the moon's varying rates of change. Through his meticulous calculations, Newton established that the moon, much like any falling object on Earth, follows a curved trajectory kept in orbit by the Earth's gravitational pull. Ultimately, Newton formulated the laws of motion and the law of universal gravitation, forever changing our understanding of the cosmos. Newton was so obsessed with alchemy that he wrote far more words about it than he ever did about gravity or optics. During the 17th century, philosophers and scientists still believed that they should be able to transmute one element into another, like changing lead into gold. They thought this secret knowledge had simply been lost, and Newton believed he was just the man to rediscover it. He started experiments as an undergraduate and continued until at least 1693. In 1693, he wrote to Samuel Pepys, who was an English diarist and served as president of the Royal Society of London, complaining of feelings of persecution, insomnia, memory loss, and loss of appetite. According to the Royal Society of London, these symptoms could have all been the result of mercury poisoning. In 1979, scientists subjected strands of Newton's hair to neutron activation and atomic absorption analysis and found out it contained up to 40 times higher levels of mercury, as well as higher than normal levels of lead and arsenic. Two of his greatest interests were the dark art of alchemy and religion, but one of the Church of England's core beliefs almost spelled disaster for Newton and his career. In 1669, Newton had been appointed Lucasian Professor of Mathematics at Trinity College in Cambridge, where he earned his bachelor's degree. To remain in this post, he was required to take an oath stating that he believed and accepted the 39 Articles of the Anglican Church. One of the articles to which Newton would need to swear was a belief in the Holy Trinity, and it disturbed him the most. In his early years at Cambridge, he studied the history of the Christian Church from its earliest days. He carefully analyzed the prophecies in the Bible and calculated the date of the crucifixion. He even tried to determine the date of the apocalypse. Newton thought this would take place in the year 2060. Anyhow, he had read the works of an early Christian named Arius. This writer denied the divinity of Jesus, and Newton fully embraced the idea. He could not, therefore, swear to believe in the Holy Trinity, when in fact, he did not. King Charles II, who at the last minute provided a dispensation for Newton, and Newton could stick with belief while maintaining the position. Sir Isaac Newton's brilliance changed the course of history, but it's essential to recognize the mad scientist within him. His eccentric experiments, alchemical pursuits, and the clash with the church paint a complex picture of a man driven by both genius and madness. As we celebrate his contributions to science, let's also acknowledge the human side of Newton, a side that was not always rational, but undeniably fascinating. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, stay curious. Until next time, this is Betterman Bazaar signing off.